So, Ant, tell yes. me where you were, what you were doing on March 3rd, 2017. <laughs> I was waiting in line for my Nintendo Switch by playing my Nintendo 3DS. Scott, why do you ask? I was just playing my Nintendo 3DS and only my Nintendo 3DS. Damn, yeah. I only played the Nintendo 3DS for months after uh, March it. 3rd, 2017. And Nintendo supplied me with enough content to play for years. Yes. Because famously, when the Nintendo Switch launched, Nintendo did not give up on the 3DS just yet. In fact, they did not give up on it for multiple years after the Switch launched, uh, to much of, I believe, your dismay. I remember you were not very happy that the 3DS was still alive and kicking. I actually blocked all that, all that out of my psyche, yeah, because I would, I would make claims about how Nintendo should kill the 3DS, finally, because it's time to move on, and a lot of people would tell me that I was wrong. And then you look at the sales, and they Nintendo sold some of their worst selling games of all time. So I'm just saying, not me. It's not me saying it. It's Nintendo's year end report saying it. Do you think a lot of those people that said you were wrong? Do you think those people were actually playing their 3DS constantly? I feel like they were just kind of like. I, I feel like it's kind of that 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 funky little little online circle of Nintendo fans that are just like, I don't know. They're doing they're doing good. Yeah. I, I like what they're doing. Don't worry about it. I think it's a lot of that and a lot of kids who just didn't have a Switch yet. Because they they had to wait for Christmas, their parents couldn't afford it then, so they're like, I got my 3DS already, so absolutely I'm going to be excited for uh, Stupid Kirby Battle Royale. But the 3DS had so much content that you could play, like, prior, that, that released prior to March 2017. That, like, it's just like, do you really need, like, brand new games constantly releasing on this thing? To be fair, that kind of kept it in, like, you know, the, the, the public's eye. But, I don't know. A lot of the games that released post-Nintendo Switch were either really surprisingly good, some of the 3DS's best stuff, or some of its genuine worst stuff, or also just some of the most, like, lifeless or kind of, kind of just phone it in just put something out on 3ds that's not bad but just kind of like it's just content for the for the handheld yeah, yeah, um, yeah and and a lot of the a lot of the content that released on the 3ds uh kind of end of 2016 beginning of 2017 started to feel like that these are kind of honorable mentions but you know we got like mario maker for 3ds in like late 2016 yep, yep, poochie yep. yoshi's woolly world yep. dragon quest 8 which was kind yep. of just that was a localization that came out prior but uh do you have any experience with these these games i mean these didn't launch after the nintendo switch but they're fun to discuss I think. so a lot of it i remember just that time the anticipation and the hype for switch people i remember there being a group of people who were, who were just saying i don't even want to play my 3ds anymore and they're ready for the newness and why doesn't nintendo wait to put yoshi's whirly world on the switch which currently at the time of this recording has not happened yet and that's a big crime uh, stuff like that. And then, like, Mario Maker's a weird thing, too, because that had a full-on story mode. That was weird. I don't really remember much about that time specifically before that, though, because I was so into wanting the Switch that I bought the, the 3DS games as they happened. I don't remember exactly. You said Woolly World, and I blocked that out of my memory. Anything that was, like, pre-Switch at that point, I don't really remember specifics. Well, I don't know what you were doing last night at uh, 11 p.m., but I was playing Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World, and uh, I, I I played through the first world. Uh, I played a bit of it before, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get footage of the first world. I think it's a very impressive port. Absolutely. Uh, it's still a Woolly World. St runs great. Looks great for this for the handheld. Uh, I, I really think it's an interesting take on the game because uh, the world map is now completely 2D. Yeah. Which almost feels like it makes more sense because for some... Like, it, like as cool as the 3D world map was in the Wii U game... It, it always kind of felt like it's just like, okay, but why, though? <laughs> because, oh, really? I loved that. I thought that was a little bit of soul that was missing on the 3DS port. I think it's really cool, but it's mm -hmm. also like, you know, the rest of the game is 2D. I think it's really cool, but it was almost like it, it felt a little more coherent with the world map being 2D, but I, I also do agree with you, though. Mario Maker for 3DS uh, is, is cool from, like, a novelty perspective. Yeah. Like, it's just kind of like, it's really weird and interesting to see new Super Mario Brothers U on the 3ds yes and to see like the game itself running on the handheld but it's very obviously like woolly world was a very good port uh mario maker felt like it, it's a fine port but it felt very much like they were like we, we just gotta put this on here a lot of the ports like pre-switch era and post-switch era too a lot of them just end up, end up being fascinating more than anything never going to be the definitive versions but like in woolly world 
I mean, this is a whole other topic, but there's content exclusive to Woolly World that is not in the Wii U version. It's not out on the Switch yet. So they accidentally made, I guess, the definitive version of this game. And some of the other ports, you can argue, I guess, are the definitive versions of these games that falls into the same bucket of, like, Hyrule Warriors before the definitive version came out and uh, weird, weird nonsense like that. Yeah, for sure. But it, it was still... And, like, I didn't really experience these games at the time because I had really no reason to. I owned these games on Wii U, and uh, the, the content that they added weren't wasn't, like, compelling enough. Uh, so I was just like, I, you know, I don't need to play Wooly World again on 3DS. Uh, you know, I can just play it on my Wii U. So I skipped out on that, and uh, I didn't really pick up a lot of the 3DS stuff uh, at the time. You know, I kind of would pick it up over over the course of, you know, like the, the, the next few years. Uh, but really the first thing that came out post Nintendo Switch, and this is pretty cool, Mario Sports Superstars. <laughs> Is that it's, pretty cool? I, it's I, pretty I, damn cool. Is that it's, pretty cool? It's what five, six, five sports in one? It's fi yeah, five sports: baseball, uh, soccer, golf, tennis, and horse riding. Yeah, and horse riding—that's like two sports in one right there. That's, <laughs> that's true. horse and riding. Uh, <laughs> that's and pretty I, cool. It came with uh, I got I got some. Cards. You haven't opened them yet? <laughs> I'm so, no, come no, on. no 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 no. The value of these—I'm gonna get them graded one day. That just shows. It's just like, come on, man. Have some have some pride in your life. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Open up your damn amiibo cards. Put them in the game. Play Breakout. What a <laughs> that's all there you What an for. abomination of a game that is. Jesus. Yeah, that's a rough one. That came out the month of the Nintendo Switch, and Mario mm. Sports Superstar. It, it, it's very interesting because like they they put more effort but less effort into this game than you'd think. Mm -hmm. Where uh, more effort in the sense that like they launched a whole damn amiibo card line with this game. Yeah. The best amiibo cards of them all. They reused art Brilliant assets from idea. everywhere. People, people trade sports cards, amiibo. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. But their implementation in the game is like nothing. There's yeah. like it's nothing. Yeah. It's like you scan the cards to play like an Arkanoid breakout clone with them, and that's it. You scan the cards to put them in your card collection, but there's a completely separate card collection in the game that doesn't use amiibo cards. The games themselves are lifeless, basically asset flips or ports of games that are already on 3DS, like Mario Tennis Open and Mario Golf World Tour. I played much more of this game than I wanted to because uh, yeah. <laughs> I made a I made a full video about it, but uh and and you've you've talked about this game before, but uh yeah, do you have yeah, any yeah. do you have any f main thoughts about this game, a thesis statement if you will? It's a, an abomination uh that more or less covers it cuz it's a shame cuz the like the golf 3DS game World Tour, fantastic. Such a great game. That's like arguably the best Mario Golf game. Tennis had a bunch of rough patches, but there was stuff that in Camelot's past they could have done. It was and quality just, enough. It did the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the other sports, they only did go uh, baseball and soccer because, hey, Mario's done them in the past. I don't know what compelled them to do horse racing, uh, but that was dumb. Yeah, it's just bad. And a lot of us around this time... I remember watching directs and thinking, well, I don't know why they just don't launch a sports game on the Switch in, in month one instead of doing... Like, it seemed weird. It, like, the, the this whole end of 3DS era, Nintendo was really phoning it in for most of it. Yeah, well, they, they announced this one in, like, that, that 3DS Direct that, that happened, like, September of Oh, yeah, that was a specific 3DS Direct. God, that was Yeah, and, yeah. and that was, like, when everybody was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, they're going to announce the Switch. Every single month of 2016, it was like, man, they're going to announce the NX. Like, I remember in January, yeah, it was like, man, I think they're going to announce it this month. And then February, yeah. I think this month, March, April, May, it was every single month we were kind of like, I think this month it's going to happen. September was like, oh, my God, finally, a Nintendo Direct this year. Nothing, just 3DS only. Yeah. And uh, that's where they announced... Mario Sports Superstars, and it was they that they pretty much announced the whole game right there, as in like, yeah. all right, yep, yeah, uh, here's the five sports they have online. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but no one was playing multi. No one was playing multiplayer 3DS at that point. No one was playing online on top of all that. It's like the online multiplayer in like a Mario and Sonic game, where it's just yeah. like, like okay, thanks, but like, yeah. who? Like, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Yeah, there's no point the, to. They checked off the box that says it has online play. Yeah, and that's about it. So overall, this might have been like one of Nintendo's worst 3DS games. I mean, like yeah. from a content perspective, th this only makes sense to give to like a kid that they they would be like oddly nostalgic about it. Like ten years later, they're like, man, when I was four, I played this to death on that 12-hour car trip. 
Mm -hmm. and it was like what did you do you just grinded on horseback riding for a while yeah yeah, (laughs) like it's just like there's nothing to this game mario sports uh mix on the wii did something similar but they were all unique sports they all had their own unique vibe it was a console so you could have multiplayer sessions easier it also just felt more like mario like they actually yeah. put effort into giving it a mario flair and mm-hmm. like having fun items and and having really great music and cool characters and uh, interesting environments blah 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 this was in that dumb mario sports era which we're still kind of in where it's just like oh let's go more for a generic vibe rather than oh mario craziness after that uh, we kind of got hit with a bit of a Bit of a better game. Bit of a better game. Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. This might be one of the best Fire Emblem games on the 3DS. There we go. I with, didn't even remember the there was a limited edition. With, with the beautiful big box. This game is this game is incredible. It's so good. Story's great. Character's great. Animation style is great. There was a lot of effort put into this game that I, I don't know how much was appreciated because of its release window. Yeah, it's very, very, very unfortunate of like when it came out and like how it came out. It was just like, yeah, April of 2017 here in, or May of 2017 here in North America. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, by, by this point, like it was pretty much like 3DS was done. It was old new. Like that damn handheld just had no place in 2017. No. <laughs> like, Tiny ass screen, 480p, like, no, not even 480p. The logic I could see, because you can't guarantee the first year of a new console to pop off, so you have this overlapping window, but the first year of the Switch was insane. It was so good, so it made it very tough to find the time to want to play older hardware when Nintendo themselves were putting out really good stuff on their new console. And interestingly, I would say 2017 was a better year for 3DS than many other years in the handheld's life. Yeah. So it was just a good year overall. I mean, it was a good year for gaming overall. There was amazing stuff coming out on PS4 and Xbox One and PC as well. So just fantastic year in general, but it was crazy to see just how much Nintendo was pumping out on both platforms. And honestly, like... The, the direction they took with 3DS, which was pretty much like, we're going to port a couple of games, uh, either like full-on remakes or just ports. Um, not the worst idea to just kind of like as like a safeguard to just make sure like, okay, if the Switch doesn't work out, 3DS is still like getting support and we can just kind of pivot to like make more new games on it if it mm-hmm. doesn't work out. Um, but Fire Emblem Echoes is like an insanely quality title yeah uh and it wasn't the only fire emblem game on 3ds that year which we'll get to mm-hmm. but uh yeah it was uh that that was announced in like the fire emblem direct in that like big early that direct. year yeah 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 Yeah, fire emblem echoes fire emblem for switch which turned out to be three houses fire emblem warriors uh for both switch and 3ds and heroes, and heroes. insane amount of stuff there yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else to say about echoes because i have never played echoes all i know is that it always looked like wow this is an insanely quality remake a necessary remake because it's of a uh, gaiden which yeah. you know japan only for the longest time and uh unfortunately like uh i think there is that report rumor that came out that because of mario and luigi uh, bowser's inside stories failure on the 3ds mm-hmm. in 2019 uh, there was like another Fire Emblem remake that they were potentially working on uh, for the 3DS that got canned. Now, hopefully that does like resurface as like a Switch game. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you have any more thoughts on Echoes? The 3DS era of Fire Emblem is very interesting because Awakening is like a great entry point for people who have never played it before. Fates, bad. That might get people <laughs> get mad. But that's a bad game. And then Echoes is an interesting thing where the strategy is not as prevalent. It's a lot of just bum rushing enemies. But the story is super good. The ca- it's one of the best cast of characters in any RPG I think I've ever played. The main characters, Alm and Selic, are great. All of their friends are great. The way the story interweaves between their two plots are great. Music's fantastic. Uh, yeah, they, they put a shocking amount of effort into this remake for a Gaiden, a game that we never got. Has still ne- like they, they ran ahead and localized the, the first NES game in that weird limited edition. Still no Gaiden. Uh, and it was clearly the basis for the world exploration of Three Houses and Engage, because you get to run around dungeons and stuff. It's just a really good game. I could rave about it for a long time. It is a very good game. Yeah, for sure. And uh, shortly after it, uh, we got Ever Oasis on the 3DS yeah. as well, which was a original game made by Grezzo, one of Grezzo's few few original games outside of the uh you know like most of the time they just do zelda remasters and remakes Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I played a little bit of this one. This was a very high quality title. Yeah. This was very, very good. And uh, it got like absolutely like nobody played it. No. Nobody played this game. No. I'm always expecting it to get like kind of a resurgence on Switch at some point. Kind of like what Metopia is in like maybe like mm -hmm. a remaster of Ever Oasis. I think that would be really really cool to see yeah because uh it, it's made by uh the creator of secret of mana if, yeah if i'm not mistaken i think so i think that's right it's just a very like pleasant game like the mm -hmm. art style is fantastic and the gameplay uh, i believe it's just like an action rpg it's an action rpg that's like you exploring dungeons to get resources to build this town around the oasis where there's like this goddess of all of the post switch 3ds games this is I think the biggest hidden gem that's unfortunate that no that not more people played because yeah that was came out of nowhere and was yeah. not given the the attention it deserved because it is shockingly really good and we knew about it for like a while like i think it got announced at e3 2016 and mm -hmm. uh yeah it just took a little too long to come out i think if it released in 2016 i think maybe some people would have given it a bit more of a more of a look Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like one of those games that I really wish just kind of got like maybe pushed to Switch. I, I think it might have done, I, I know it would have done a lot better on Switch. Luckily, this is a game that's not like, it's not required to have two screens or touch screens. So if yeah. they wanted to make a port like Metopia, they absolutely could. Um, I don't know how well it would perform, but hopefully its quality would do enough to sell it because that is a very good game. But speaking of Metopia. We have to talk yes. about that. This was a big day for 3DS. I remember this. This was when not only Metopia launched, but another game launched. And on top of that, a new 3DS system launched. This was oh. the day. The Which new 2DS XL released. Oh, oh. The new 2DS XL. Man. One of the stupidest combinations of words. <laughs> Man. Yeah, out, yeah, yeah. Out there. There's no yeah. 2DS. There's no 2DS XL. This is the new 2DS XL. Yes. And it launched right alongside Metopia and Hey Pikmin, which is a bit of a an assault on all senses, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, there's, yeah. like I don't know. I was never a big fan of Metopia, personally. I know there are fans of Metopia because I've heard their cries uh, <laughs> when the Switch version came out. Mm -hmm. I remember saying, "I'm just like, hey, listen, like I know this is for like, you know, like you get out, you get out of Metopia as much as you put in." Like you really yeah. need to commit. My problem is I feel like the the quirkiness and funniness of it was just done so much better in a game like Tomodachi Life. And that was because of the text to speech yeah. uh, element of that game. Where it was just funny to hear your friends or, or celebrities or whatever you put in that game say these outlandish things. Where in Metopia, all you see are these text boxes pop up, these speech bubbles. And it's just like, that's just not as endearing or as cool or as interesting because it's just like, anybody can do that. I can draw a picture of you like eating a hot dog and put a speech <laughs> bubble and have you say something horrible. And I'm just like, yeah. that that that's about, that's the same kind of experience I would get doing the same thing in like Metopia, um, yeah. where it just didn't feel like as something as special as like Tomodachi Life. Um, I don't know. Have, have you played Metopia? So I have on I have on the Switch, and I think that level of quirkiness was added to that Switch version because the me creator and the facial editor is great. But when you don't have that in the 3DS version, yeah, I felt the same way. Like I love the idea of them trying to make games out of me's. There's not enough games that do that, but I don't think the 3DS version really did anything special. But there's a lot of people nostalgic for it. Like when it yeah. got remade, I was seeing comments all over the place like, "Oh wow, I played this game so much." And it's not like it's a very in-depth game. It's like it's a whatever, haha. Look at, look at my mom fighting the, fighting the dragon. That's just why um, I always prefer Tomodachi Life because it's just like it didn't even try to be a game. <laughs> like that, yeah, yeah, that's what I like. Metopia is kind of like all right, we'll give you a bit of gameplay, and like the game is so light in that where it's just like it's just it, it's a bit more of a slog for me to get through because mm -hmm. it's just like it's an RPG, so it takes you know, yeah. a good good couple dozen hours. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't know how long it is to beat, but I'd assume 10 to 20 range. Something like that. Yeah, and um, when when the gameplay is so basic, it's not like brain dead, but it's it, it gets to that point sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it is something where it's just like, I don't know. And like, yeah, you can put more of your personality and just fun quirkiness in there. But it's just like when, when Tomodachi Life still did that better, it's just, 
I've always preferred Tomodachi Life. It's one of those things where, like, again, the 3DS is still being... They were releasing 3DS games that were better for a group of people to sit and laugh at, but you're sitting there in your own little box, not being able to share those experiences. So Miitopia on the Switch, I had a ton of fun having people come over and like, hey, look at look at this craziness, and then you see it on Twitter or what everyone's doing. That was not a thing for the 3DS version, so a lot of that appeal was just gone right off the bat. Yeah, for sure. Um, not a bad game, though. Like, no, even on 3DS, fine. not a bad game. It's it's fine. It, it's, it's good for what it is. Uh, it just wasn't ever my thing. Yeah. Uh, but on that same day, what might be my thing, uh, Hey Pikmin. Yes. Made by the Yoshi's New Island developers. Yes. The greatest people. Absolutely. God I've bless ever... our tune. Uh, our man. zest, whatever the hell yeah. they're going by. Our tune was Yoshi's Island DS, and then they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. morphed, evolved, just grossly turned into our zest. The yeah. makers of Balan Wonderworld. Uh, yeah, so Hey Pikmin. Um, also not a bad game overall. I will die on this hill. I like that company and I like the games they put out. Whenever someone asks, like, what's a bad game that people hate that you like? It's always the portable Yoshi's Island games and I and I really like Hey Pikmin. It didn't need to exist. I'm not going to say it needed to exist. But for what they did, they managed to adapt the Pikmin formula into a side-scroller, I think, decently well. I don't know what else you, they could. I don't know what else they could have done. I think it's fine. You know what always bugged me about it? There's no time limit. Yeah, there's no time limit. I think that's strange. Yeah. Because like out of all games, I'm like Pikmin. It, the entire like thing about Pikmin is the time limit. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's just like I just find that really weird. But yeah, like you said, like I think it's fine enough for what it is. Um, mm. And uh, you know, it it has like enough like polish put into it. It is just something where it, it felt like just an odd, it just felt like odd timing, you know? It's something mm -hmm. where it's just like, why kind of try and reinvent the Pikmin formula for the 3DS uh, when the Switch is already out? And it's also like, there, you know, it's just like, there, there just wasn't really any Pikmin related shenanigans going on at the time to really like try to like, oh, introduce the Pikmin brand to younger audiences. And then what are they going to do? Nothing. Yeah, exactly. There was nothing. There was nothing Pikmin related for years. <laughs> yes. Until Pikmin yeah. 3 Deluxe. So it's just kind of like, I don't know, just very odd timing. Another, and like another oddity about this one. Oh, for one, playable only in 2D. Forgot about that. That's when all these games started saying just 2D only on the bottom yep. of it. Strange um, time. Very strange time. But also, this is a game that doesn't perform super great on an original 3DS, and it performs better on a new 3DS. And it's weird. Mm -hmm. It's weird that of all games, this is one that doesn't it doesn't run terribly, but it, the frame rate is shockingly choppy on an original 3DS um, and not on a new 3DS. Very weird. Yeah, especially when it's a it's 2D platformer, you know, and it, it, I mean, like, it uses both screens, which that's another weird thing when 3DS games use two screens like that, where it's trying to show, like, the whole thing. Where it just, mm. it, it feels like this game would have worked better as, like, a 2009 DS game. Because yeah. it's just like, uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it would have made more sense around that time. Uh, dual screen setup like that just works better on the DS because both screens are the same size. On the 3DS, mm -hmm. it always just seems odd because it's yeah. also like most of your most of what you're doing in Hey Pikmin is going to be on that bottom screen, which is incredibly tiny. Uh, and then pretty much the top screen is a little more like, Hey, maybe sometimes like you're gonna see something cool up there. Well, see, they did that cool boss fight. They did that cool boss fight where the bulborb's eyes were on the top screen. Yeah, looking over you. They did. They tried. They, they, they did. They, some, they did some they okay tried. stuff with it. Uh, it yeah. It's just kind of like I feel like bad timing with it. I feel like it would have made more sense on the original DS. Sure. Uh, but uh, as you were saying, most a lot of these games started to just not include 2D. Uh, Miitopia mm. did, uh, and that, that was because, like, that game launched in Japan, like, in 2016, and that was yeah. kind of, like, it was this weird thing where it just, like, 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 we didn't know what the hell it was, and then mm. it eventually got announced for North America, but a lot of these games just started to not include 2D. Mario Sports Superstars has, like, the, like, worst implementation of 3D ever, like, it has 3D, but it really does not. <laughs> uh, I forget even what it was. It was pretty much just like the the text is 3D. Oh, just like pops out. Ooh. Yeah, wow. like the te the UI text pops out. That's pretty much it. Beautiful. Also, around this time, after the Switch launched, Nintendo switched their logo around to be red, mm. 
with the Nintendo yep. logo on white. And these spines yep. are the bane of my existence. I hate these damn things. I think they... <laughs> I don't get it. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. It definitely differentiates when a game released and when it didn't. It's uh, This is a whole spine of just red side Or a whole like, list of red sides here. It's uh... Yeah. I hated it. Because it's just like pretty much like the entire 3DS life went by with like a very nice consistency on the 3DS spine. Nintendo logo is on the bottom horizontal gray. That's great. And then they all swap over to like vertical and on its side and red and I'm just like I hated yeah. it. I hated yeah, it so yeah, much yeah. my headphone came out. But <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it's the worst. But also on this day, the new 2DS XL launched. Do you have this system? What do you think of it? I do not I do not have one. Wow, have you ever played one? I have. It's a it's another it's another one of these consoles. They I don't like damn it. Damn it, they made another one. I don't like the new 2DS XL. I'll I don't like it, it either. No. It's a little it's a little like too it. fl it's it's very flimsy. Yeah. I know the hinge is never supposed to be stiff, but it is way too flimsy. Uh the top that's the one where the top has like the weird diagonals on it, right? Or, like the yep. weird grooves on the top. It's yeah, weird. Yeah, you can yeah, you can rub it a little bit. It gets you it gives you a fun little sensation, I guess. Uh, uh the Nintendo logo is angled on it yeah. and the 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 3ds top screen looks like a smartphone that's all people could say about it the hinge like sticks out when it's closed it's like the yeah. weird hump and, it's weird i don't like it yeah and people said like this might be the definitive 3ds i'm like what the hell are you talking about i never yeah. got that like the new 3ds xl or even the new 3ds yeah those are the, the, the definitive 3ds beautiful uh the new 2ds xl the buttons don't feel good uh, it's just no. really cheap feeling I don't like it. It, it kind of like satisfied a weird market where it's just kind of, I, I don't even know what market it satisfied where it's just like, mm -hmm. it felt like it's just like, you just kind of whittle it down. So then like the new 3DS XL is for the pro user. Then the 2DS is for the whatever. It's just like, ah, I just give it to the kid user. The, yes. What do we have in the middle? You could have easily made it so then like, I don't know, you just keep the 3DS XL around or the regular original 3DS or the new 3DS. Because I remember the new 3DS, uh, the, the the regular size new 3DS on like Black Friday would be like 100 to $150. So right in that middle market. Um, but no, the new 2DS XL, that was like $150. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I don't know. Like, I was just like... <laughs> I didn't like it. Uh, I, I don't see that. Yeah, like I don't. It. I don't see. I don't see the point. They made yeah. so many new 3DS XL variants and different skins and stuff like that to make an entirely new console seemed unnecessary. I would assume it's to cut costs on their end, like oh, on yeah. Nintendo's oh, yeah. end. Like that. That's kind of the point because there was a lot of 3DS hardware that pretty much like met that price requirement. That, but it's also like, hey, but they don't play the new 3DS software. What software? What new 3DS software is there to play? We're gonna talk about Super, one. Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo games. Oh my God! Yay! <laughs> and the Switch <laughs> didn't play those yet, so it's just like, oh wow, exactly That's necessary. Well, after all this, uh, Monster Hunter Stories came out uh, mm -hmm. in September. I never played this this one in particular. I played Monster Hunter Stories two for a bit on Switch, um, yeah. which I mean, it's a cool little like Pokemon like game. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool little offshoot for the Monster Hunter series. Uh, nothing yeah. more, nothing less for me because like I haven't played it. But uh, yeah. have, have you played this one? I know you have the amiibo for it. <laughs> I don't. No, those are the ones I don't have. I have Never every amiibo mind. but those. Because uh, I'm not really a Monster Hunter guy. But the style of stories I think is cute. I think having a Pokemon like in the Monster Hunter world is cute. Similarly, I played a little bit of two. I think just because the first one released on 3DS, I wasn't gonna commit to something that was an unknown uh at the time so yeah similarly yeah. I haven't played it but it looks cool this kind of felt like it was kind of being put out because uh they just needed stuff because like this mm -hmm. launched in like 26 2016 in japan only uh so i think nintendo was like we'll publish this for you <laughs> we'll bring yeah. it over we don't really care yeah, yeah. uh but but something that we probably have a little more to talk about came out uh that month in september 2017 uh this was when metroid samus returns launched oh, yeah. this was kind of the big traditional nintendo game for 2017 on the 3ds yeah. arguably their last uh their last big 3ds game that's ex like exclusive 3ds content a solid swan song 
if I do say yeah. so. I mean, like, and this was after, uh, you know, Metroid Prime Federation Force came out a year prior. This was yep. an insane year for Metroid, where yep. you got Prime Federation Force the year prior, and then that that next E3, you got two new Metroid games announced uh, with Metroid Prime 4 and Metroid Samus Returns. Uh, and Prime Federation Force isn't bad. It's just, you know, like, it just came yep. out at the wrong time. I think if it was swapped around and Samus Returns came out in 2016 and Federation Force came out a year later... Uh, and, you know, I, I I don't think that would have been that bad. We'd all be talking about how much of a hidden gem it is. Yeah. Uh, which I, I think eventually Prime Federation Forest may get to that point. <laughs> I mm. think maybe. But, uh, yeah, what did you think about Samus Returns? Uh, well, for one, talking about E3, it has one of my favorite Nintendo reveals of any E3 ever because it wasn't part of their E3 Direct. They did their whole Direct. They showed off whatever their first game was, cut to black, come back, and Reggie's like, we got one more thing. And we're like, oh my god, another Metroid game? Like, that was insane. That was oh my such god, a great Sushi re- Striker? <laughs> Yo! Yeah! Uh, we, we'll talk about that soon. <laughs> oh, absolutely, we'll talk about Sushi Striker. Someone I has to. I love Sushi Striker. Metroid's no Sushi Striker, but it is a very good game. They did. They they, they knocked it out of the park with this one. It was really yeah, good. Yeah, it yeah. is something where uh, the 3DS I used to capture footage off of is an original 3DS. Um, mm-hmm. so the, the, the little I played of this one was very painful because this mm-hmm. game uses everything on the 3S, all everything. the shoulder button, each shoulder button, everything. And the touch screen. Yeah. So, uh, I did not like playing it on the original 3DS. Uh, yeah. definitely feels a lot better with their next game, Dread, on like a pro controller, yeah. just feels a lot more laid out. But I'm sorry, go on about, uh, your thoughts on Samus. No, no, no. I thought, uh, you know, simply having a new 2D Metroid game by a new studio, I went back and played their load, the Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate after that. And you could see a little bit, uh, they definitely knocked it out of the park compared to what they did previously. What was interesting about this time, too, for a Metro, as a Metroid fan, AM2R was around the same time, too. The, so the fan-made remake of Metroid 2. So having two remakes sort of side-by-side side led to a lot of cool discussions in that specific window. Uh, and I personally prefer AM2R. But Samus Returns, I thought, did a great job and obviously was a great uh, uh, jumping-off point for what would become Metroid Dread. I played Dread, you know, I played and beat Dread, and then I tried out Samus Returns, and it is insane how how much they pretty much nailed it, like, right from the get-go with Samus yeah. Returns. That dodge mechanic with the, the yeah. handgun, like, that changes the whole thing, and they did that in their first. Mercury's theme, I, I think with uh, Castlevania Lords of Sh- Shadow Mirror of Fate, it, it just kind of came down to the fact that, like, they had to make, like, this Castlevania beat em up basically, uh, as mm. a Metroidvania. And I think that's where a lot of, like, that game's problems stemmed. I know a lot of people mm. really love that game. I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, I never really got into it. But, so, um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was something where you can see, like, this was a very talented studio for this kind of thing. Uh, however, uh, under the right direction and supervision, uh, they are, like, the ideal 2D Metroid studio right now. Mm-hmm. And it was great to see that, like, in 2017 on the 3DS... It's a shame it was on the 3DS, but it also wasn't because, like, it had some of the best 3D on the system. Yeah. It felt like it was just like, man, you know, like, what a way to go out. The 3DS actually got its Metroid game. It was something that, like, we were asking for for years at that point yeah. to get, like, we need a 2D Metroid game. And to finally get it near the end was was really special. I just wish it kind of happened a bit earlier. A lot of times of with these systems, it kind of feels like like that game that you always wanted for. It always comes out just a little too late. With something like uh, on on the Switch with like Persona 5R, finally comes out. I feel like if it came out a year or two b- prior, it would have hit a little harder. Bigger impact. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But it, I mean, Nintendo definitely needed a big. Because again, we'll talk about more games, but this is their final like really big game for the console, and it is a remake, so it's not entirely pure original content but in terms of the the amount that they put into it to make it a 3ds game like again we'll go down the list but a lot of these games don't use 3d anymore but yeah similarly this one does it uses everything about the 3ds great 3d touchscreen is used uh, i remember like the digger fight where like the diggers in the background just attacking you and that looked cool in 3d uh yeah they for a series that was dead at the start of the generation they uh they really ended the 3ds with like a really strong note but Something else decided I'm gonna end 3DS on a stronger note. Yokai Watch 2 Psychic Specters. Oh, 
I don't own that one. I can't oh, that man. One. Can't, <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why not? I know, I know. Why can't don't say, you? Can't, can't say I'm a Yokai Watch guy. I've not yeah, met a, any, I've, ne I've never met anybody who's been a Yokai Watch guy. So Maybe I'm not convinced something. they exist. A lot, of, a lot of people are nostalgic over it, you know? Good for them. It is, uh, I mean, like, it's quality enough for what it is. I just feel like it appeals to, uh, it, it appealed to kids back then. Uh, you know, like, hey, oh man, I gotta get all the yokai. Japan loved yokai watch. Uh, yeah. Japan was all in on yokai Until they didn't. Because, like, yes. I think, like, uh, they did yokai watch 4, and they did change the genre. Tanked. Tanked. Yep. But, yeah, this was, like, the third version of, uh, yokai watch 2. It was kind of like the Pokemon Emerald to, uh, yep. yokai watch 2. Uh, yep. bony spirits and fleshy souls. This is the third, Psychic Specters. On the tip of my tongue, those names. Uh, okay. Don't worry, we got more Yokai Watch to discuss. I know, I, too, I know. But there was more. I yeah, I know. I'm sure. I'm sure they'll. I'm sure there'll be some comment about how we just need to give these games a shot. And I, I don't. I don't know, man. I'm. I'm. I'm glad they have their audience. They were all seven when they first played it. I'm really happy for them to have. Nostalgia I tried a bit of Yokai Watch One. It's a game. I. I would agree with you. It's, it was it's a game. So, it's. It's interactive software for the Nintendo 3DS family. Of it systems. is. It is. I, listen, I will. I will maintain. So I, I've never been a Pokemon fan, and I've tried pretty much every game. Just not my thing. I feel like. Do you think if you did not play Pokemon in your youth, would you find it easy to jump into Pokemon today? I think Scarlet and Violet, yes. Otherwise, no. Yeah, and I feel like that's the same with the Yokai Watch. So it just yeah. kind of depends oh, on for if sure. you grow up with it, you know. Or you yeah, gotta yeah, be in the absolutely. right mindset to really like be like, oh man, I'm gonna get into this. The same people who are like super nostalgic for fossil fighters, it's the same thing. You know, like oh uh, man, I, I need I need to get the fossil fighters for 3DS. That's gonna be that's gonna be a hard one to find someday. Absolutely. So who the hell remembers Fossil Fighter Fighters Frontier? Frontier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just like uh, huh, oh no. But uh <laughs> only shortly after Yokai Watch Two Psychic Specters. Uh Definitely have more to say about this one. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. Yes. This was a with cool the red, release. With the red case. The red yeah. case. Also uh, plays only in 2D as well. This was like leaked early on in the year as like Superstar mm -hmm. Saga DX. Um, yeah. And it finally got revealed alongside like uh, Metroid Samus Returns at E3 2017. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this was a good release. This was good. Yeah. This may be the definitive version of Superstar Saga. I would agree. Yeah, like the sprite work is not maybe as crazy, flamboyant, and all over the place as the GBA version, but is a super yeah. solid version of the game. Plays great. Remixes are great. Um, doesn't tamper with things as much as Bowser's Inside Story, which we'll talk about. Um, mm. The new content, bad though. The, the <laughs> Bowser's Minions, is, is that stuff is bad. and They released Goomba Amiibo with it though. That was pretty cool. And Koopa, and that was the glow in the dark boo, also. No, that launch was Star Rush, which we can talk about Star Damn, Rush. Damn, yeah. foolish me. I, I mean, we can talk about Mario Party soon. That's coming up Japan. soon, too. This release made sense. They didn't release it digitally on the 3DS. It was a GBA game you couldn't play on the console. Great version of the game. If you haven't played Superstar Saga, great game. What came after, trash, but this was a good game. Oh, don't worry. I mean, like, uh, don't don't worry. We won't disagree on that. But I, I think <laughs> this release pretty much solidified the 3DS as like the ultimate Mario and Luigi machine because you could play every single game on the 3DS uncompromised, perfectly. Uh, I mean, like, you couldn't play the original Superstar Saga, but this is still Superstar Saga at the end of the day. So mm. uh, that was really really cool. The Bowser's Minions mode is completely like. There's no point to this. It's mindless. Like, yeah, it's just like, you don't need it. I don't understand why Nintendo usually feels like it's just like, well, we need to add something new to it. It's just like, yeah. why do you feel like that sometimes, but you don't feel like that other times? Like, just add another right. character or something. Just just add, like, a music box or something. I don't know. It adds a little bit of extra context to the plot. Like, a very, very minute piece of deep. Like, the whole thing when Bowser goes away and becomes his alternate self. They kind of dive into that middle point of the story a little bit. But to be fair, I was never asking that as a kid, so yeah, I don't care. It is something that's uh, that was cool to see, though. Uh, it definitely, definitely helped. Like, hey, you know, like if the Switch fails, we have a Mario game released for the uh, for the 3DS yep. this holiday. Though it wasn't the only Mario game released for this 3DS that that's holiday. Right. We'll get it's into true. that. 
But uh, for the time being, uh, also in October of 2017, Fire Emblem Warriors released for the new 3DS only. Have yep. you played this version? No, it's sealed. I this is when uh, Best Buy was selling them new copies for like seven dollars just to get them off their shelf. So that's that's when I got, I got the it sealed copy. Too. Yeah, I played it on new 3DS. It is shockingly competent. It's pretty sure. much the same game. It does the job. It's also, but it's also not a good Warriors game. Yeah, that's the thing. Like Fire Emblem is, is something where it's just like you can pull th from so much with that game. And uh, Fire Emblem Warriors just pretty much pulled from like the the stuff that modern Fire Emblem always pulled from. This is going from yeah. a non Fire Emblem fan, and I even know this. Where it's just like, yeah. oh man, it's Awakening stuff. Oh man, it's Fate stuff. Oh man, it's Marth. Oh man, it's all yeah. They put Marth in there. They put Lin in there and Celica from Echoes, but they had such a small role. Yeah, it's pretty much just the basic stuff, like you yeah. know, just like. And Hyrule Warriors pull from like they they pulled the Toon Zelda oh, shit out. Everything. Who are just everything. Like, Marin is in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Female Link, Linkle. You had Linkle isn't there. You yeah. had yeah. You, you had Ravio. Like, it's just like yeah. you just had all this random junk what was the, in the game. The Link Between Worlds final boss that was uh, Yuga. Oh god, yeah, Yuga. I think it's Yuga. Yuga yeah. was in there. They cut they. So when like in Fire Emblem Warriors when they pulled out, oh, it's the final boss from the first game. No one's like, dude! Everyone's like, yeah. oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Fire Emblem was something that, like, oh, man, this makes so much sense to do. But it's just, like, the way they did it was just pretty underwhelming. It's not a yeah. bad game. Like, I, I, I usually play a lot of Warriors games in the sense of, like, just kind of mindless, and it's kind of cool when it's a crossover kind of mm -hmm. thing. I, I played a bit more of, like, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. And that's a quality Three game. Hopes is really good. Yeah. I know nothing of what was going on because I didn't play Three Houses. It's a direct, it's like, it's like a direct, uh, well, a direct sequel, but also a side story from Three, it's like an alternate universe. That, like that and Age, Age of Calamity really nailed the But they're it also a technically non-canon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what stings for me. Like, I'm just like, Age of Calamity was really good, but I was just like, man, that story just took the, took the wet fart approach. Or it's just <laughs> like, come on, man. What are you it's doing? Fair. It's, it's fair. just like, uh, or it's just like, oh well, this is a alternate idea of what could have happened. I'm just like, piss off. It's all multiverse stuff now, man. Everything is I multiverse, hate that. so it's all multiverse stuff. It now. Do I don't care then. Like I'm just like, oh no wonder this is the timeline where they won. I could dream that up myself. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I don't know, because that's not what happened in the regular game. So it's just. I don't know. I definitely don't plan on opening this anytime in the near future. I'll say that much. But, like, you could see what it's like to play Fire Emblem Warriors on the new 3DS. That would be I do have a cool. modded 3DS, though. Have you played it there? No. <laughs> you could try. Just come on, man. All these games are new experiences. It would be... It's just cool to be like, you know what? Damn. It's it's just an interesting footnote because it's a new 3DS game. It's a new 3... It has the stupid top banner on it yeah. it's a new 3ds exclusive well you want to talk about another new 3ds exclusive nintendo may not have published this one but minecraft came out around this time too that's true i also don't own that one sad to I say i own that one i own all the new 3ds physical games they're pretty cool wow all yeah. four of them yeah minecraft works that's about it it's minecraft yeah it's, it's minecraft on the new 3ds it includes the it includes the mario stuff in there though right it does it does yeah, yeah. it's just it's just very kind of a pared down minecraft on the 3ds that would have been dude that would have lit the world that that would have lit like some 12 year olds on fire in 2015 if yeah. minecraft for the 3ds came out in 2015 dude these kids would have been would, would have been <laughs> going it. wild yeah yeah where yeah, it, it came out it came out on 3ds after it came out on switch so it's just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> Like, it's, it's kind of cool. It is cool to see, like, a game like Minecraft run on the 3DS. That is kind of cool. I think there's some novelty to also playing an outdated version of Minecraft because they've done so many updates. I think that's pretty neat. Yeah. But overall, um, around the same time, it happened. Mario Party, the top 100. Yeah. Th that, that technically plays in 2D only. I think the 3D in that game is also text only. Just the menu, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, come on, man. That's just lame. They didn't, they never, they never, I don't know whose top 100 this was. They didn't ask anybody. I think they did a sufficient job picking. I think they did a sufficient job picking the mini games. But that's all that really went into development. This was a, a wonderful idea. And thankfully they rectified themselves with Mario Party Superstars on the Switch because yeah. this is pretty much the top 100 but finished. 
Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so thankfully they didn't waste this this idea. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is like, for some reason they put out three Mario parties on 3DS already. I found that very yeah. strange. Star Rush, Island Tour, and this. I feel like they didn't even like sell that crazy well. I think Island Tour probably did the best. But yeah. like by the time Star Rush came out, like did that really do well enough? Like I doubt no. it. It's like I said earlier, I don't know how many people were actively playing 3DSs with other people at this time. It didn't make any sense. I think a Mario Party game like that and uh, Top 100 only really sell to like parents who are uh, like just like, oh, Mario. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like yeah, they yeah. just, they pick it up for their kid and, and that's or us. it. Or us, or us who are like, oh yeah, 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 I love, I, I love buying this <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean like, okay, okay, cool, great idea. Great idea. When this yeah. got announced, it was like, oh my, that's amazing. I don't think any Nintendo game has gotten me so mad about its existence. Yeah, because it's just like, there's no glue holding the mini games together. No. There's one board, and it's a Mario Party Star Rush board. And then there's Minigame Island. Which, yeah. Cool. But it's just like, that's it. Like, yeah. there's nothing else. You can say, oh man, all in 100 minigames. But it's just like, Mario Party minigames are really awesome when it's just like, you are in the middle of it. You are playing yeah. a Mario Party N64 board. You're playing a Mario Party GameCube board. You're playing a Mario Party 8 board, whatever. And after every turn, you get a good one. It's like, oh my god, this is so much fun. Uh, yeah. But then it's over, and then it's just like, oh man. And then you don't play it for a little bit. And then and then when you play it like an hour later, then it's like, yeah, back to this one or something. Or you yeah. play it like a week later, next time you play Mario Party. When yeah. the mini games are all that's there, they are nothing. They are not yeah. fun. They are not enjoyable. And when you say the top 100, you put an image in people's heads of what cool these things if, could be. Yeah, it would have been cool if we could have like voted or something. Yeah. And like it would have been a fan vote. Like they put they put books book squirms in here. That's a good one. They got some good ones. I mean like it it, it it's not like this is like wow, this is just a hundred random mini games. There's some genuinely good ones in there, but I do think Superstars has a better selection overall. For sure. And I feel like the top one hundred uh was obviously just to put out Mario content that holiday season which is weird because mario and luigi was already coming out yeah. uh mario sports superstars was already a game that released that year <laughs> oh yep. man this was a weird year for mario <laughs> yeah very much so. yes you, you got superstars you got party top 100 then you have odyssey <laughs> it's just <laughs> that's, that's like me. that's that's a fucking disgusting ass sandwich that's like <laughs> that's like moldy ass bread and like some good oh. that's some good ham in the middle there oh. <laughs> uh but yeah it's uh it, it it's it's strange yeah not a good game not a hot take though i'll give it a four out of ten i guess that's fair uh that's I fair it's I, quality I, enough it works and the mini games are are there and intact it's not the worst mario party it's cute it's a cute thing where it's just i have would you say that though? I I think Island Tour is the worst. I think Island Tour is the worst. But that has boards actually. Not yeah, good they're all, boards. I think I think I think they're bad. Um, from what I remember, I remember Star Rush having good mini games but bad boards. I feel like I'd rather play those than Top 100. Top 100, is like, that's like that's like something that's like neat that it exists in the concept that oh, 100 mini games all in one cart and that's about it. I just feel no incentive to play it outside of that. So I don't know. I'm willing uh, to have this debate, but. Gotta, gotta oh, move on at some point. For another time, yeah, yeah, yeah. In November of 2017, we got Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Yes. Shocked the world because I believe earlier in the year, there was a, a rumor going around that the third version of the Pokemon Sun and Moon games was coming Pokemon to Nintendo Stars. Switch. Pokemon yeah. Stars. Yeah. And they announced Pokemon Tournament DX instead. Yes. Lit the world on fire. Everybody was like, thank God I didn't want Pokemon Stars. I wanted to play as <laughs> I wanted to play as Pikachu Libre on my Switch. Absolutely. They had to announce at the Nintendo E3 2017 event that they were working on Pokemon for Switch, mm -hmm. um, which that was pretty much the nail in the coffin for 3DS right there. Mm -hmm. I, I think they were. I think Nintendo. I it, it's pretty interesting that it seems like Nintendo pretty early on noticed that like okay the Switch is going to be just fine. Uh, they were just like in June they were okay with saying. Yeah, Pokemon's coming to Switch. But uh, in the meantime, they did Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, I know nothing about 
Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, outside of like very okay. few little details. So, uh, have you played these games? Uh, and if so, even if not so, what do you think about them? I think <laughs> uh, the Pokemon fan base is always very cyclical when it comes to what generations are good and bad. It doesn't matter. It's all. It's always just like what happened ten years ago. That one was pretty good. Exactly. Why can't so the games we'll, be like that anymore? We'll see the narrative shift over time, but as it currently stands, it is, I think, the worst gen. I Damn. Think Sun and Moon, I think Sun and Moon is very bad, way too hand-holdy. I don't think the island aesthetic, I don't think they went far enough with it outside of some of the Alolan Pokemon designs being cute. Um, yeah, not a fan. Uh, so Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, from what I've heard, I have not played that one specifically, they say it's not much better. It's just they kind of made things different they retconned some story elements of sun and moon in weird ways uh apparently the final boss they added their new pokemon that's a good fight um but otherwise yeah it just seems like such an unnecessary thing and it's so weird because x and y didn't get a third version at all and sun and moon got a third version but they did the two version thing which black and white also did but black and white got proper sequels. It's weird. I don't know why these games exist. It's interesting because like these Pokemon games feel like they're they're fully set up to have a third version with like the naming, you know, mm -hmm. like black and white, obviously gray. Okay, black and white too. Uh, X mm -hmm. and Y, obviously Z. The anime yeah. was called Pokemon X Y Z. Yes. They introduced Z moves in Sun and Moon. Yes. What? What the hell happened? Well, no, the final the final fight in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is Ultra Necrozma. What is that? It's, it's, it's a Pokemon, man. Okay. It's Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. <laughs> well, either way, uh, and Sun and Moon, and you can make the... Okay, stars, whatever. Uh, no yeah. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. That's another thing, too. Like, stars would have been good. Stars would have been good because the games run very poorly on 3DS. Mm -hmm. uh, they really try to push what the system can do. And God help you if there's more than two Pokemon on screen for a battle at any given time. It is a chug fest so the idea of stars would have been great because you got would get to see the game run out of frame rate it would have given uh the switch like a pokemon release that holiday season and it wouldn't have been that like exhausting to do you know like yeah. i think that would have been a really cool thing but um you know the way they did it ended up working out obviously in the end uh, mm -hmm. you know it gave the switch a bit a bit of you know time to just be itself without a pokemon game right, um right. But yeah, this was a strange release. Still did very well. It's sure. it's always shocking how well like these things will do because like Pokemon yep. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moons was still like a multi million seller uh, right. in 2017 on the 3DS. That is the power of Pokemon. I'm sure you could put Without out a fail. Pokemon game for the DS right now and it would still sell like seven million copies. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty crazy. But around this time, uh, earlier in the year, it was announced that like uh, you know Kirby's. 25th anniversary was going on and there are more games that we haven't talked about that are eShop exclusives but uh you know we're just talking about big bucks you know the retail stuff right now and then we can kind of go back and mention the eShop games and our quick mm. thoughts on them but uh they they mentioned uh oh and a multiplayer action kirby game is coming to the 3ds they didn't even they didn't show anything else they didn't yep. say anything else they didn't say a name they didn't do anything so this could have been really anything i heard people uh, kind of theorize this could be like kind of like maybe an air ride sequel, maybe a city trial s game or something yeah. along those lines, or maybe like an, a Kirby Amazing Mirror. That's my 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 hope was like that. Yeah. No, this was Kirby Battle Royale. Yes. This isn't really a good game. No. The content <laughs> the, the yeah. content creator in me was very happy. I was like, yeah. oh, sick! I get to make another video. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know anyone else. I have not met a single other person in my life that has also played this game. I will give it to Kirby, the Kirby series of just, they do at least like like to do like brand new ideas. They like to try new things. And this was a new idea and a new thing. You know? Kirby is a very malleable franchise. Yeah. And at the baseline, like every Kirby game is at least okay. It's just that they had a bunch of decent ideas, but you're basing it off of hoping to play with other people. There is a story mode, but playing with computer it's not exciting. You want to play with other people, and no one was playing this. This had online, and I was able to maybe find another person or two when the game came out. God forbid now. Yeah. Um, there's some cool things in the lore. They gave the sleep ability a move set. I think that's kind of neat. Has this mm -hmm. cool art style with this like this checkerboard design and stuff on the characters. But the game itself has like a cool cel shaded kind of uh, look yeah, to it. Yeah. 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 With yeah. Outlines and stuff. 
that's kind of cool. You know, like they didn't just try to, they, they didn't just reuse the uh, triple deluxe engine or, or anything like yeah. that. Um, yeah. Which they, they could have, they could have made kind of like a 2D game. But I think it's cool that, you know, they did something completely weird and new on the 3DS. Yeah. That's there was a lot cool. of effort put into this one because it's like yeah. 10 different mini games and stuff. It's just. But that's all it is. It's a mini game collection. It's just yep. a mini game collection kind of disguised as like. It's it's about a multiplayer action game, but it's just it's it's a mini game collection. It's a very yeah. small mini game collection that has these decorations around it that make it yeah. seem like oh man, you have a story mode. Oh man, you have online multiplayer, but it's just like that that's that's kind of masking the fact that it's just ten mini games at the end of the day that right. don't really have like a ton of depth. Like the Apple mini game is kind of fun for a second. If that yeah. was in a Kirby party game, like a Mario Party clone with Kirby, that would be really cool. If it was like one of 50 or 60 mini games yeah but like no it's it's kind of the big mini game in this game you know and so they say just... the, bo- the back of the box says story mode it's just dd's doing something compete that's the whole story mode yeah that, that's about it which is just like at the end of the day i, I would give this like a five to a six if that's it was fair. like if it was an e-shop game too like if it was an e-shop game it would be like yeah sure it would be it would be in the spot that dream buffet is now yeah yeah. Which is just like if Dream Buffet was like sold for forty dollars retail, then it would be kind of like, all yeah. right. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Kirby Battle Royale. It's just an interesting release, especially because like here in North America, it came out like three months before Star Allies, which is interesting. Yeah. And then a year before uh, the other Kirby 3DS game. I'll give them credit though. It's like one of the only games in this stack that has like a unique font. Yeah, I like that about it. I like that. That's the Kirby games mostly have a pretty unique font. And Kirby's yeah. extra epic yarn, which we'll talk about, retains the weird, like, impact style font that the Wii game spine had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I always found very weird that that game had, like, the most, like, like just, like, hardened logo on the spine where it's just, like, it's just it's Kirby's epic yarn. Don't worry about it. it. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that, that came out, like... Uh, late in 2017 for most countries, but early in 2018 for uh, yeah. for us here in North America. But 2018 was definitely a uh, a much smaller year for 3DS than 2017. But still, like they, they had quite a bit of stuff going on, nonetheless. Uh, started out for us with uh, Kirby Battle Royale, but uh, we later went into Detective Pikachu, which was very surprising to see, mainly because this was a game, and it still is a game That's that true. just gets. That's true. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Dylan's <laughs> Dead Heat Breakers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this is a game and series that just gets talked about and then disappears. And then yes. it comes back and then disappears. Because yes. this, th- th- there was this whole thing where uh, Creatures, which was the developer of, of this, and, you know, they work on the Pokemon series, They're like a third of the Pokemon company. Um, mm-hmm. They were working on like this po- the, this Pikachu game where where Pikachu was talking. Pikachu was like having they were using like facial recognition or something or, or, or face tracking to like animate Pikachu like yelling and stuff. I remember seeing like those behind the scene scenes images and then nothing. And then like three years or something later, they announced Detective Pikachu for Japan only episode one on the eShop. Nothing <laughs> for like three years again and then detective pikachu oh yeah it's finished <laughs> and, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. and we're localizing it and it's getting an amiibo the biggest amiibo of them all out yeah <laughs> and then a year later the movie releases they announced detective pikachu is coming to switch nothing <laughs> nothing for more years this is a very very odd series especially how you know like this was the basis of the first big hollywood live action pokemon movie it feels like they almost put this out on 3ds just because the movie was coming out within the year and they were like god uh, we gotta put this game out to do this i never played this game uh i have it it's it's okay i so i like ace attorney a whole lot it's my favorite Mm -hmm. franchise so i was like oh baby's first ace attorney yeah 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 so i imagine if you are not familiar with things at all and you think pokemon's cute then maybe and i guess animation is impressive for the 3DS, but it's not good. <laughs> I mean, it's always yeah. impressive when, like, they can do a lot of animation with, like, those in-game models, you know? Yeah. like It's just, like, I've come to really appreciate when I see, like, a game do a lot with their models and animation and just, like, 
all that stuff. And I appreciate like any push to make the Pokemon world feel like a lived in place. Yeah, which is why I really thought like the movie was was quite good. It's Mm -hmm. it's pretty, you know, it didn't really leave much of an impact. Like it did pretty Mm -hmm. okay, uh, but it didn't leave much of an impact, especially compared to like, you know, stuff like the Sonic movie and now with like The Last of Us show and all that stuff. But watching that movie in the theater, uh, it was like, wow, this is like, this is they they did it they did a good job uh doing this and detective pikachu was honestly a pretty good like thing to adapt into a movie it was Mm -hmm. strange but it did the job um but yeah launched with a huge ass amiibo love it the best part is there any reason for it to be that big no yeah they just wanted to make it big it's cool though the base has like the has like a map of like the city streets and stuff on it so yeah that's it's, it's cool looking and he's like stop that's his whole thing yeah it was uh it's something that i definitely want to try out because it's such a weird release especially how episode one came out in japan in like 2016 and then nothing and then they were like all right just the full game <laughs> releases now also uh in early 2018 this is a weird one because for us it was an eShop exclusive um which we can talk about another eShop exclusive that was uh uh later in 2017 uh but uh you know we'll, we'll talk about this after this one have you ever played dylan's dead heat breakers no i played it for 10 minutes it's it's weird i liked the first one i liked the first one the first dylan game and I know the second one is very similar. This and one's the third Mad one is, Max yeah. Dylan. Dylan's yeah, yeah. rolling western. It's weird. You play as a me. Yeah, a me and like a fur, like a furry me. Yeah. Yeah, you play as a me, and it's in a post-apocalyptic world, and it's like it's strange. Like they put a lot of their butt. Like they 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 had a bigger budget for this one. They put so much more work into this one. This doesn't feel like just an eShop game because it wasn't just an eShop game. You know, in other regions, it was a retail game. Here they didn't have much hope in it i think so yeah. they just they made it eShop only which really makes me wonder how well this game did how many people played this in north america i don't really think yeah. a 40 dollar 3ds eShop exclusive in may no. of 2018 sold like i would be shocked if this sold over 10,000 copies even yeah, 5,000. honestly like like i would be shocked especially when yeah. it's dylan's rolling western <laughs> yeah like, I don't know. But also, uh, I forgot to mention Style Savvy Styling Star. What the hell? That released on Christmas Day as an eShop exclusive Day. here in North America. Again, God. I would be shocked if this sold over 5,000 copies. The Style Savvy fans do exist. I know that much for a they're fact. They're not they bad games. It. And yeah, like, they're, they're fine games. I played this one. Um, I played this one for footage. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, they, their quality... Like, and it's just like, it can be kind of fun to kind of try and pick out an outfit to match your customers once. I can imagine like this being like really fun for like, if this is like your, your type of game. Um, sure. but they made a bunch of them for 3DS. They made like yeah. three of them. Someone was buying them. It's interesting to me that they really pushed to, uh, put this out on 3DS when I'm just kind of like, you probably could have, uh, you probably could have put this out on switch and i think it would have done pretty well did that get a physical in, in europe yeah it's a Weird. physical game over there Weird. eShop only over here but yeah dylan's dead heat breakers was our big eShop game but now in june of 2018 sushi striker the way oh. of sushido a full month yes. a full month after i mean a full year after it got announced I like Sushi Striker. What do you? I think? like Sushi Striker too. I don't have it on 3DS. I have the Switch one, but I don't. I, it's a, it's actually I think probably better on 3DS than it is on Switch. I kind of like the the Switch one because uh, I I think uh, using the the thumbstick to uh, all, the, you know it pretty much auto locks to like different sushi. Yeah. It, it's satisfying to me. I think it's just kind of a satisfying turn your brain off kind of kind of game. Where just yeah. just the sound effects of like linking up all the sushi is really really satisfying and addicting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The problem is the game is really only like I don't know, like it gets pretty old. Very the gameplay quickly. loop is like that. Once you make one long ten chain sushi plate, that's the whole game. Uh, the story mode, the story mode is delightfully dumb. So My problem great. with the story mode though is that like you fight the same damn guards, like yes. for seventy percent of the game, and yes. it's just like 
the battlefield looks the exact same. The only thing that's like different is like there's a window behind your your enemy and it shows like the outside of like where you are in the story mode. That's I'm like yeah. why can't the entire like field be different? Why can't yeah, yeah. why do I have to be fighting the exact same looking guards? They're the exact same things every single time. I got decently far into the story mode I think on Switch, but Sushi has been outlawed and only you are able to save the world. You don't have to sell me on it. I love this game. <laughs> Does the 3DS version have online multiplayer? Yeah, it's the same game. Okay, okay. It's the same exact game. Like, okay. the 3DS version is, like, how the game was meant to be played, I guess. And, you know, obviously with the touchscreen, like, you know, it works. But you can also do that on Switch. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the 3DS game. Um, the Switch version was, like, $10 more expensive, I think. Yeah. It was, like, $50. It, it ain't even worth $40. Like, I, I, I will be a Sushi Striker defender, but this is an eShop game. That's a $20 game, maybe. Yeah, they, they weirdly put a little too much effort into it. The opening to Sushi Striker is so good. They made a whole anime opening to it. The fact that the game has so much, like, voice acting, animation, it, it has, like, genuine a bunch of animated cutscenes, and then outside of the animated cutscenes, they have, like, the standard, like, whatever, like, stock photos, like, talking to each other. That still has a decent amount of voice acting to it. Yep. Like, and, like, they have online multiplayer, all this stuff. They really put in way too much effort into this game, where I feel like who, they could have cut back. Indie developed it? Zero! Oh, my God. I like Indie Zero. They, they've done a lot of really weird, obscure stuff. I think they did Big Brain Academy on Switch, and they also did NES Remix. They did, and, the, they did the Theater Rhythm game. Yeah. yeah, NES Remix they worked on. They did a lot of really random stuff that's kind of like those, that, those cute Japanese, like, smaller games. Oh, they did the 3DS Guide Louvre. Yeah, they did a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's just kind of like, oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> Nothing that I'm actively yeah. super passionate about outside of Sushi Striker, which I will admit is kind of a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 game, but still. When the time it released, Sushi Striker, in my mind, I always equate to Fling Smash for some reason. That just is at true. at the tail end of a console, and they're just like, we made a new IP. You keep yeah. asking for new <laughs> IPs, we made a new IP. It came out at a fun time, though. Th this was like around E3, and uh, I don't know, it was still in kind of that exciting Switch time. And uh, I just moved into my first apartment, so it was just like, I felt f***ing empowered. And I was just like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's nice and hot out, it's a beautiful day. And I'm like, you know what, screw it. I don't even have to tell my parents I'm leaving to Best Buy to pick up Sushi Striker. I can just f***ing do it. <laughs> so I did. Because <laughs> I so played rebellious. the demo, and I was just like, yes! And Mario Tennis Aces came out around that time too. I don't know, like, uh, wait, wait, wait. yeah. I, I get, I get kind of nostalgic over that, that period of time. Just because I moved into my apartment for the first time, so I felt very empowered. And even though I yeah. don't really care for Mario Tennis Ace, it's just kind of like, man, I remember that. Like the weird 2018 Nintendo afterglow after a good 2017. I, I have weird nostalgia for, like, the bad parts of Nintendo history, where I'm just like, sure. man, I remember that time. That sucked. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could live <laughs> through it again. Because it's just yeah. like, I don't know. It's just, it's just fun. But, yeah. yeah Sushi Striker around June 2018. I like Sushi Striker, but... I do, too. I... It was never going to succeed. I think they should have really cut back on it and uh, make it like a cool little eShop game on Switch. And I think it would have done much better and probably wouldn't have been as big of a failure because it obviously severely failed. <laughs> it wouldn't be as interesting if it didn't release on both consoles. Too. Yeah. If it was just on one of the consoles, it would be more forgotten about. Yeah, but I think they could have, like, as much as the anime intro and all that stuff was really cool... They didn't need it. They didn't need the 20-hour no. story mode. They didn't need all that stuff. The puzzle element, the gameplay, is really fun and addicting. And I think they could have focused on just that instead of trying to make it something bigger than what it needed to be. But I digress. I agree. Only a yeah. month later, they had another dual release on Nintendo Switch and 3DS. One of the strangest but most satisfying things to see, in my opinion, was Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Uh, this was during the year of all of the Wii U releases... Uh, all, all the Wii U ports on Nintendo Switch. Like, it was... They pretty much knocked out all of the 2014 Wii U games on Switch that year. Bayonetta 2, Hyrule Warriors, Donkey Kong Country, Captain Toad, Smash Brothers, if you want to count that. Uh, yeah, yeah. They pretty much gave you everything from that year. And Captain Toad is definitely a game... It, the way they did this was always very strange. Um, how they retconned it as a 3D World prequel... And they turned it into an Odyssey prequel. Yeah, I always found very odd. It's very odd. Have you? It is a very that, that game and it, everything about the 3DS version of that game is very strange. But it felt oddly like, man, 
our boys are coming home, you know, because it's just like, <laughs> it felt like a game that always made sense for the 3DS because 3D World yeah. was based on 3D Land and 3D World, as good as 3D World is, felt kind of like, ah, man, you know, you still got that 3D Land gunk in there where it's just like, yeah. sometimes you kind of miss some jumps, you kind of you kind of accidentally fall off the ledge and it's kind of like, man, we really, like, this would have worked a little better with that 3D display. And Captain Toad was a little similar because Captain Toad's from 3D land and imagining those, like, cube levels on the 3DS just felt kind of right uh, to me. Yeah. And to yeah, see yeah. that finally happen was just, it was kind of cool. And, and funnily enough, I think, like, the Switch version of that game is arguably the worst one. I would have definitely agreed with you at that time. But since they've done a lot of free updates to that. Oh yeah, sure. Po yeah, yeah. There's the a update. The whole last paid DLC mess. mode that nobody yeah, yeah, yeah. talks about. I I don't even yeah. know about anything in that. Honestly, after this, because like right now I'm just I'm just like ah screw it. I'm just dicking around, having a break. I might go on the <laughs> eShop, buy the DLC, just to be like, you know what? I just need to see what this thing is. That's fair. That, that's totally fair. And it is good DLC because that's just that the basis of Captain Toad is a very good game. But it's really weird because it happened like a year after the we the Switch port came out. Yeah. And it only happened on the Nintendo Switch version, not on the 3DS version, which is fair enough, but still. Yeah. Um, yeah, at, at that point, I'm kind of like, why not just make a sequel? Uh, yeah. Or why not just wait till 2019 to release the Captain Toad Switch port? And that way you could have these levels into the whole package. I, I don't know, because... I don't think anybody really knows about these levels. Like, no. everybody completely forgot about them after they were announced. No, no, I, yeah, I agree. Uh, I just think with the 3DS version, having the touchscreen... Since the Switch, you can do the touchscreen stuff, but since it's all motion when it's docked, it doesn't feel as tactile exactly. as the 3DS or Wii version. You're losing the gyroscope stuff uh, mm -hmm. of those versions as well. I don't know, does the 3DS version do the gyro stuff when you're in the minecart? So I, I played this... Yeah, I played it yesterday. It did not for me. Oh, weird. You only use weird. the thumbstick. Now, maybe I didn't have a setting enabled, but I don't think it did. I don't think it had gyroscope okay. in there. Okay. So the Wii U version, I guess, is still the best. Yeah, but the 3DS version is still incredibly impressive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it looks amazing on 3DS. This game yeah. looks like pretty much like it's it's Captain Toad, and it runs yeah. great. It looks great. It sounds great. It's, it's Captain Toad Treasure Tracker on the 3DS, pretty much yeah. verbatim, because yeah. like I, I'm. I, I think Nintendo themselves ported it, so it's just like you know, mm -hmm. like they were just like, eh, we're gonna take our time with this. We're gonna make sure it it runs and works great, and it does. They gave Toad bigger eyes. Yes, they did. And you know what? It's I think he looks kind of nice. I think he looks kind of nice with bigger eyes. I just, I just don't understand. It's also it's very weird. strange because the game just doubles what's going on on the top screen and bottom yeah. screen. It's just the same thing, but on the bottom screen you can use the touch screen. Which does get a little clunky, um, mainly because, like, uh, you know, imagine, like, uh, you can use the shoulder buttons of the 3DS and the D-pad to control the camera, but obviously the best way to control Captain Toad is, like, using the touchscreen to kind of move the level around and all that, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. being able to tap the screen. And um, on the 3DS, it does get a little clunky, I guess, because, you know, you have to move around and maybe you have to use the A button to uh, pluck stuff, or maybe mm -hmm. you want to run with the B button slightly with slight speed increase it, yeah. it can get kind of a handful um but overall it is a fantastic port it, it's probably one of the best looking 3ds games in my opinion yeah the demo uses the dragon fight and for good reason because that should not run on a 3ds it doesn't even feel out of place on the 3ds it just feels like just feels like a 3ds game it's not like yeah. how uh something like uh, mario maker for 3ds is obviously like this obviously wasn't made for this platform yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's very much in line with like woolly world where i feel like these both feel like they were just designed from the ground up for this handheld but they're ports and it's very impressive yeah. Yeah, but yeah. a month later this was a good year for 3ds in my opinion i agree one of the best ones one of the best games on the platform came out and it was one of the last games on the platform i think i know yeah, Yokai Watch Blasters. No! Ah, Damn it! WarioWare Gold! Yay! It's amazing. I love this game. Arguably the best WarioWare. I'd say it is the best. I'd say yeah. it's the best WarioWare. It includes pretty much everything from the series history. And it uses... Like, it's something where... I've seen some, some people say, like, Man, like, we need to see WarioWare Gold come to Switch. I'm like, it wouldn't work. They're using no. everything from the 3DS outside of the 3D, strangely enough. Think of how many 3DS games use the microphone. Yeah. And this one does. It uses the tilt, it uses the touchscreen, uses the buttons, uses the... 
I might use the dual screens, I forget. <laughs> but either way, all the extras in the game, all the extras, well, technically it does use the dual screen because it has the gamer minigame from Game & Wario That's in it. That's right. I love this this uh, thing that Nintendo kind of started with Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, yeah. where it's kind of like, hey, um, this series has been dead for a little bit, so we're going to bring it back with a couple, with some new content in, in a new shell, but it, it's mainly going to be kind of us remaking old content in a new way where it's not like a remaster it's not like just a retread it's kind of repurposing old content in a fun new way that yeah. turns us into a new experience and they did a lot with this they changed the art style yeah. there's full voice acting there's the thing where you can dub over the cutscenes which was really yeah. fun and there's a lot of cool collectibles it's really cool like there's there's so much new in this game while also being like a really cool like Blast from the past from like Wario War history. Yeah. There's a lot of cool like uh, new mini micro games too. 300 micro games uh, yeah. by the box. They even introduced like the new character like Lulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was uh, then brought over to Wario War Get It Together, mm -hmm. um, which is a good Wario War game. I like Wario War Get It Together, but uh, I don't know. I think Gold is better overall. Gold is the best. Like Rhythm Heaven is weird because they added the content they added to to Mega Mix is a little weird and not the best. So you can mm -hmm. argue still which versions are, are better. But yeah, like all of the stuff they added to this one stuck true to form for WarioWare. It's just as wacky and zany. They didn't hold back. The new art style I think is super good. Uh, this is the definitive WarioWare experience. So I'm not surprised for Switch they did something different. Because I don't know how you can top what you did here without just porting it. I found it very weird that WarioWare Gold had so much voice acting. Get It Together didn't really have... Like they, they had yeah. voice acting but like... It was that selective voice acting. We're like, oh, yeah. we'll voice some lines. I found that be weird. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's just yeah. like, what, what happened there? But yeah, I, I really love Warrior War Gold. That was pretty much the only like 3DS game that year that I actually sat down and played that year. A lot of these games I played in retrospect and I've played like since. But in 2018, I was like, I'm cracking out the 3DS for a new Wario where I have to. You might be playing Captain Toad later today. I might be playing this now. I'm feeling. Damn. I'm feeling. What, what's that supposed away. to mean? That that sounded oddly like man. No, no, no. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know what you're doing with your Captain Toad bullshit. <laughs> but I'm, I'm playing, playing a man's War. game. I'm playing a man's yeah. game. I mean, hey, if you have a lot to say about Wario World Gold, how much you have to say about Yokai Watch Blasters? They they made. They made software for the Nintendo 3DS family of systems. It's Ghostbusters, but with yokai. Yeah. I also don't really know what the difference between... There's two versions of them, right? Yeah, Red Cat Core and White Dog Squad. That, that's it. I had it on the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. Red Cat Core and White Dog Squad. If somebody put a gun to your head and was just like, you're I'm getting dead. it unless that's you... It. It's, it's, it's over. Yeah. yeah, it's White Dog Squad, you dumbass. <laughs> Come on. I know. What's crazy is that is that's not the last 3DS Yokai Watch game. That's, no. That's, that's insane. I think the last Yokai Watch 3DS game is getting kind of expensive. It's, it already is. It I have Yokai Watch 3, though. Congratulations. So I'm safe. Yeah. I'm safe. Thank you. Uh, a little bit after Warrior Word Gold came a game that was uh, heartbreaking for many. I remember this was this was a big deal for many people. The fact this was not coming to Nintendo Switch. It is a remake of the original Luigi's Mansion. This was a good game. This was a good remake. This was good on 3DS, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Bad timing. Oh, if this absolutely. came out in 2016, that would have been pretty dope. Yeah, that's undeniable. Yeah, that would have been like, man, hell yeah, Luigi's Mansion on 3DS, that kind of saved the year because 2016 was notoriously pretty lame year as a Nintendo fan. Wasn't a lot going on. Their main like Mario game that year was Star Rush. Meh. Or like Paper Mario Color Splash, you know, mixed reception there. I liked it, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, Luigi's Mansion. If that came, if that if that was the 3DS game in 2016, that would have been pretty cool. Came out in 2018 though, and like, I don't, I don't know who was playing this at the time. That was just like, wow. Did you play this at the time, or did you play this later? I think I did. Uh, because I, I know I wanted to do a video on it at some point, so I made myself uh play it and then use the footage after the fact. But I love Luigi's Mansion. I love the GameCube games a bunch. So I was like, it's one of my favorite GameCube games. That I, mm -hmm. I replay that game very often. So I was like, I have to see what it's like. And to be honest, it may be a controversial take, I guess. But I do prefer the 3DS version mm -hmm. uh, to the GameCube one. It's just that no one cares. The stuff that they <laughs> added is... Because they added the co-op mode that runs... 
It's like one of the worst performing things Nintendo's ever done when you throw Gooigi into the mix. It's they added horrendous. the Polter Pup, and I don't know what to think of that canonically. <laughs> right? Yeah, the, the timeline is all. I, more I think the way they it's more I think the stuff. way they introduced Gooigi was really cute. Was because it was like it's uh, Professor Egad from the future calling yeah. back in and stuff. I think that was cool, especially considering how this was all building up to Luigi's Mansion Three, which was announced like a month before this game. I, this game released so like this game got announced in like one of the best nintendo directs of all mm -hmm. time because like mm -hmm. this was like when smash was revealed octo expansion uh crash bandicoot insane trilogy mm -hmm. captain toad all this stuff got announced for switch okami uh just a bunch of stuff mario tennis aces was further detailed and then 3ds kind of got one last big hurrah outside of like the september direct which uh announced like uh <laughs> the last the big last game but it was really cool how this was meant to kind of tie into luigi's mansion 3 without us yeah. knowing it was at the time yeah, yeah. but um still like would have been really cool on switch absolutely oh absolutely because luigi's mansion is just an incredible game no matter what console you play it on well we'll get mm -hmm. to this point with some of nintendo's later releases but one of the things i like is that even though the new stuff is like whatever it doesn't interfere with the core luigi's mansion experience it's mm -hmm. still if you just play luigi's mansion it's still there looks good i think if you have a new 3ds with the second analog it plays fine um yeah I'm, it has gyro too i'm pretty sure when it comes to aiming mm -hmm. and i'm a big fan of that i think they modified the extra mansion too like the second quest um i think they made it more like how it was in europe where it was supposed to be more different than just a hard mode i think um and what's weird with the artwork is every piece of art is exactly the same except for luigi they made a new yeah. luigi render but everything else is from 2001 uh, it's a very weird release, but I think it's my preferred version of the uh, the original. I do miss N64 era Luigi model from yeah. uh, the GameCube one. Just yeah. the big ass eyes and yeah, <laughs> just all that. Looking. I do miss that, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously the new the new model is more fit for the times. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think this is a good remake. Just came out at a bad time. Yeah. Uh, that's just kind of the main thing. Because like. Yeah, but it, it was still really cool, and it, it is cool that I think Luigi's Mansion was kind of like one of the last games that really like kind of solidified like pretty much every era of Nintendo home console and handheld is kind of like playable on the 3DS in some form. Mm -hmm. We're like, okay, Wii stuff, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Xenoblade, uh, GameCube, you have Luigi's Mansion, N64, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Star Fox, yep. uh, you know, and then SNES and NES, you have Virtual Console and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, in Wii U, you have Hyrule Warriors, Captain Toad, Super yeah. Mario Maker. I think, and, and Nintendo Switch, you have Sushi Striker, yeah, so yeah. like, and Fire Emblem Warriors. You know, like pretty much every era of Nintendo is playable on the 3DS in some form. I that's think really that's cool. kind of neat. Oh, and then GB, GBA with Mart with uh, Superstar Saga. You have that. You have uh, uh, DS with uh, what we're gonna talk about next. Absolutely. Which is Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. You can't forget the full, you can't forget the full title. If you mind me, uh, all, all I can say about this game is uh, what a stupid fucking idea. It's so bad. Oh my God, it's so bad. <laughs> what a dumb, stupid idea they had, especially considering Alpha Dream, obviously, I mean, like you don't just go bankrupt off of one 3DS remake kind of game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were hurting before this. I mean, like, it doesn't, it's not like, oh, damn, like, oh, all our money's gone because we spent it all on Bowser's Inside Story. Obviously, some problems arose before this, but the idea that they were depending, the, the future of their company depended on a remake of Bowser's Inside Story on the 3DS in 2019, I have to question... Yeah. How their company made it that long. Yes. <laughs> like, if the, if these people were making these decisions throughout all these years. First off, they announced this game in, like, March 2018. A couple months after Superstar Saga already came out for 3DS. Mm -hmm. And basically a full year before the game was even coming out. This was when Nintendo kind of transitioned over to, like, we're going to announce our games pretty much a couple months before they're ready. Like, Smash Brothers was announced and released before this game <laughs> released. Yes. It's weird. Yep. Uh, this one just boggles the mind and it's not even a great remake. That's the thing, it's just that its existence would be questionable 
from its existence and its time and all that sort of stuff, but it's also just not a good version of the game. Superstar Saga, again, you could argue it's the definitive version. Regardless of whether or not you can play the original on that console, it's the definitive version. Not only can you play Bowser's Inside Story on a 3DS if you have the cartridge, this is just a worse version. It runs worse, the times in between battles take longer, so it just it pads the game out. It doesn't feel as smooth as Dream Team and, and Paper Jam did. Once again, the side content, Bowser Jr.'s Journey sucks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. I mean, it's still it's still Bowser's Inside Story at the end of the day. So, like, as a game it's in a vacuum, fine. it's yeah. fine. It's still Bowser's Inside Story, so it's good. But it's just, like, it, it's not in 3D. What improvements, in quotes, did they really add? It arguably looks better. But I yeah. don't even disagree because the sprite work is so good and the DS game has so much mm. personality that is not replicated uh, with the sprites here. Yeah, so this was pretty much just a way to repackage an old game and just sell it on yes. like in, in a modern store. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't understand. I feel like if you would have put this game out on Switch, then you have that you you have that argument of like okay well i'm playing it on my switch yeah where the 3ds like you could already play it on your 3ds yeah. via ds backwards compatibility um which is it's always weird when it's just like you know i i kind of felt like that with like twilight princess where i'm just like oh why would you remake a game that i could already technically play on the wii u but at least that had more like that was more of like hey this does look better it runs better it plays better with, you know, more control options. You have more content, all of that. Bowser's Inside Story was just like, you are just trying to make 3DS content for the sake of making 3DS content, in quotes, just in case, like, the Switch still fails right. and, and there's still a market for 3DS games. And the fact this basically killed Alpha Dream, like, it is something where that is incredibly depressing, but it's also something where, all right, but you thought this was going to save your company or this yeah. was going to really help you? Like, come Man, on, guys. The thing is, Bowser's Inside Story is often lauded as the best one of the five. So if they released this on Switch and they did a lot of effort to it and we got a full-on console version, it would be the console debut of Mario & Luigi, full 3D, but it was Bowser's Inside Story. Dude, that... That would, that would have been an easy recipe for success. But they decided to cheap out and just kind of use like, all right, well, we're used to making 3DS games. We can make this really quick. Yeah. So let's just use our 3DS engine and put it out on 3DS and yeah. kill them. And it's not like they weren't even doing Switch development at that time because they worked on the Mario and Sonic uh, Olympic Games 2020. Yeah. Like they, they helped out with that. So it's just like, it's just really confusing. This was yeah. one of the most confusing 3DS releases. Yeah. Uh, but Yo-Kai Watch 3 came out a little bit later. So, you know, thank God. What do you got to say about that one? At least it, was, it wasn't multiple releases. It was just one. It was a piece of video game software released for the it Nintendo was. 3DS family of systems. I own this one. I know I've said that multiple times today, but I own it. That's the only thing that's notable about Yo-Kai Watch 3 is it's like $200 now. It's going to go up <laughs> by the time people watch this. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's going to be very easy to pay my pay off my mortgage <laughs> at that point. The last Nintendo published game on the 3DS happened to be Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. Yes. Uh, which is very interesting. I mean, Kirby is almost always there at the end of a console's lifespan. Like, pretty yes. much always. It's it's It was pretty much Nintendo's last published game on Wii with Dream Collection. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much Nintendo's uh, last DS, major DS game with Mass Attack. He's always there. He's which, always uh, there. Which, uh, you know, hey, I thought Planet Robobot was going to be the last 3DS game for Kirby. No. I thought Battle Royale was going to be the last one. I thought Battle Royale was going to be the last. No. It was extra epic yarn. Yeah. So uh, yeah, what do you uh, what do you think about this one? Epic Yarn is a phenomenal game. I think the Wii version is great, amazing art style, uh, good feel. Really knows what they're doing when it comes to art style, and I think Kirby meshed well with that stuff. Great, had a lot of cool, unique ideas. So when they said, "Oh, with 3DS port," I was like, "Okay, interesting decision." You already did Woolly World, and now you're doing you're going back and doing Epic Yarn, and it's fine. But they, like, so back when I said Luigi's Mansion, none of the new things interfere with the overall experience. They made changes to Extra Epic Yarn that I do think hinder the overall experience. They added abilities, because Epic Yarn didn't have copy abilities, and now there's Ravel abilities, which are similar. Uh, the game was not built for that, you can't disable them, so they're weird. Then there's, like, a hard mode where, like, this animated gif of a demon 
will follow you every 20 seconds. It's dumb. The game is not built for that. And you can't... That you can disable, but you can't turn off Ravel abilities. And I think that alone, I think, makes it an inferior product. There are new minigames, which are neat. And it's very similar to the Poochie stuff they added in Woolly World. So that doesn't interfere with things, but it's such a minute part of the overall experience. There's no co-op, and co-op was a cool part of Epic Yarn. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a game. It technically looks a little worse, but it's also kind of like, like, you know, like it doesn't look that much worse. It's not like, oh my god, what is this? It's yeah. just kind of darker, it's not, not as vibrant kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. It's fine for what it is. I mean, like, it's something where I'm sure they just kind of looked at it and it was like, this is a 2D platformer that should be fairly easy to bring over to 3ds so they yeah. did yeah. um i just feel like it's weird how they always feel like it's just like we gotta add something new we gotta yeah. add something extra to this it's just like i don't know why it's called it kirby's extra epic yarn and it's just yeah. like you just you don't need to add anything extra to this it's a 3ds game in 2019 the people who are buying it aren't buying it for the ravel abilities no. they're buying it because they want to play a kirby game on the 3ds for some reason in 2019 yeah uh you remember there was like kind of a rumor there was a weird thing where it was like it was going to be a new 3ds exclusive like i yeah. think it was like mentioned on nintendo's website but uh no and, but it was also like yep plays only in 2d uh yep. at, at least like a game like captain toad that was in 3d that was pretty cool. The 3D would have looked cool in this because there's some parts where you're pulling the fabric yeah. in, fr in front of you and stuff and you go behind fat. Like, that would have been kind of yeah. neat. But, hey, at least, like, it w even with a game like Luigi's Mansion, that was also at least in 3D, too. Yeah. Um, so, like, they were still doing 3D, but I think they were only doing 3D with the games where they were like, come on, it makes sense for us to do 3D for this. Where yeah. Luigi's Mansion, it's kind of fulfilling that prophecy of, like, the original game being demoed in 3D, like, when they were thinking about adding that ability to the GameCube. Right. And Captain Toad being kind of based on 3D World, which is based on 3D Land. Yeah. But that was pretty much all of Nintendo's retail releases. They had some eShop stuff. Uh, they had, a, you know, the Kirby releases, like uh, Team yeah. Kirby Clash. And those uh, are all Kirby's interesting Blowout little nuggets. Blast. Yeah, Blowout Blast was, like, beatable in, like, you know, 30 minutes, but, you know, it's, you know... Some people it's really fine. like it. I really don't, and I got people got mad at me for that. But I've I've put in my time as a Kirby fan. I don't need to please anybody. Kirby 3D Rumble was already a pretty like weak sub game overall mm -hmm. in in Planet Robot. It was fine as a sub game. It was like you know can't really ask for more. But it's just like it, it was ten minutes. Kirby yeah. Blowout Blast is thirty. <laughs> There's some cool fan service based on Dreamland. Um, like, some of the music is brought back. Some of the King Dedede's animations are just straight up pulled from Dreamland and nothing else. So that's kind of I mean, cool. it's kind of cool that it's basically kind of a reimagining of Dreamland in a yeah. 3D space. Not really, but still. Like, I mean, it follows the beats of Dreamland. Yeah. But without, you know, the levels. And yeah, yeah, just yeah. kind of like the bosses, I guess. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, was there any other, like, eShop games that they made? Uh, I can, I can there's take a, a look. A bunch of Picross E games. Bye bye Box Boy. Bye bye Box Boy. Uh, Blaster yeah. Master Zero released day and date, I believe, with the Switch version. Very interesting. They they also had Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Yep, yep, yep. Shakedown Hawaii. Shakedown Remember that one. On there. Uh, Run Runbow Pocket came out. That's another new 3DS yeah. exclusive. Which that that works pretty well. I I think Runbow deserves a little more like like love because like it was always a cool like 2D yeah. platformer indie game. I got this. I got this here. There's the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Layton's, Layton's Daughter Mr. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which that came out on Switch as well later down the line as it DX, did. but that's still kind of like, a, that, you know, that just came out at, a, at an unfortunate time. My other um, pickup that I know you have probably a lot to say about, I have a Persona Q2. Persona Q2. I know you're the biggest that Persona was like, fan. Well, I that know. was like one of the true last third-party 3DS games. I bought this and it's still sealed because I knew for a fact it was going to be worth something someday. And it's yeah. becoming that. <laughs> Uh, this, a, this was a weird release, because this is a similar one where they just pumped it out. They, they didn't really localize it. It has English text. They didn't do voice acting, though. Is it still Japanese voices? Japanese voices, yeah. But, like, Q, Q1, they did English voices, but because this was such a late release, they didn't get the voice acting rolled back. They just did all the text, and that's it. Yeah, but they still did the limited edition, and they still did a box release and all that yes. stuff. It's just, like... It's very weird. <laughs> yeah, that was when Atlas... Atlas is still always weird, but Atlas was still, like, being Atlas back then. Or at least now, they're at least doing multi-platform stuff. They're at least Finally, going, yeah. like... Yeah, but even then, they still do weird stuff, like Soul Hackers 2, which, uh, you yeah. know, Soul Hackers 1 
was a remake of like a uh, Saturn game, was it? But it was like uh, on 3DS, Soul Hackers, uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, they did a remake on 3DS. And then they finally do a sequel all these years later. It doesn't come out on Nintendo platforms. It comes yep. out on damn Xbox. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Why? <laughs> Why? Yep. Uh, it's uh, like it's a part of like the Shin Megami Tensei series, and Shin Megami Tensei Five is only a Nintendo Switch. Yep. <laughs> but then this is uh, only on PlayStation and Xbox. It makes no sense. There's a remake of Apollo Justice that was eShop exclusive, yeah. and that was that was weird. Steam World Dig Two came out, which was kind of interesting. I, I think that came out a little after. It came out on like Switch and all of that. It came out a while after, so it was cool. Yeah. Cool to see that. Which game it recorded. is. Yeah, it is cool because you know Steam World Dig was you know, originally a 3DS game. So that mm. was really, really cool to see. Mm. Uh, Cold Sept, or-, or uh, Oh, Cold Sept Saga? Yeah, or there was Revolt also like RPG, called. there was R2, RPG Maker Fez. There's a couple good RPGs on here. Alliance Alive is, came out then. A Radiant Historia uh, remake came out, which is kind of cool. That was a DS game. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Hunter Detective Story Ghost of the Dusk came out. It's badass. Hell yeah, That's dude! That's super cool. <laughs> uh, I got, I got. This came out afterwards too. Just Cooking Mama's Sweet Shop. Oh, that was that was after three. That was after Switch. That was after Switch. How interesting! Very Damn. interesting. There's a lot of stuff that came out, and uh, I, I'd say it's very interesting. I mean, Nintendo tends to do this with a bunch of their uh, handhelds. DS had a lot of support after 3DS launched. I mean, like you had the Pokemon Black and White came out so close to the 3DS launch. And even afterwards, you had Mass Attack, you had Professor yep. Layton, you had Pokemon Conquest, Black and White 2, yep. uh, lots of stuff. And uh, GBA, GBA had a very big life after the DS launch. You had Minish Cap, you know, yep. come out afterwards. It's just a very interesting thing. Well, all those consoles thrived because you were still able to play those games on the newer system. Yeah. So having these 3DS games that you couldn't play on a Switch, all these 3DSs were collecting dust. And the arguments at the time were so annoying, because as we said earlier, yeah, I was someone who was championing the death of the 3DS, and I would always hear, well, think of the install base. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Nobody's not, playing they're it! They're not playing it anymore. The Wii and had I a also bought base. seven of them! I have seven 3DSs! <laughs> there you go, you so count seven overall, times that. Yeah, so overall, the 70 plus million install base of the 3DS is probably about 20 people. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Yeah. Only 20 people owned a 3DS because like 20 of those people own so many variants. Yeah, and if I day. wasn't making YouTube videos, there's a chunk of these games I know I likely would not have picked up. Yeah, but it's still really, really cool to just kind of go back and just go through these games. Because, mm -hmm. uh, hey, you know, like I have an excuse. I like to get footage of these games because I have my big, big ass hard drive full of gameplay yep. footage that I like archiving so then I can use that footage whenever. Um, so, you know, yeah, last night I did go through Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World, and it was really cool to be able to play that on the 3DS. Mm. Even if that game comes to Switch, um, it, I mean, even when that game comes to Switch, I think it's still really cool to see these games playable on that 3DS screen and be able to play them like in the context of like this weird 260p <laughs> like 3DS version. Yep. Uh, and playing Captain Toad is really cool. Uh, you know, Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn, just seeing that on a 3DS display. Like, there's something weirdly magical about yeah. that. Yeah, oh. no, I, I agree. And But I think we're both people who really take pleasure when Nintendo does weird stuff. Yeah. Uh, they always lead to more interest. Like, the stories behind some of these things, like Luigi's Mansion on 3DS, the story behind that's a lot more interesting than Luigi's Mansion 3. Like, that game yeah. just came out, had high budget, sold really well. Good for them. Luigi's Mansion yeah. 3DS had a weird history. And, you know... It gave a Sushi Striker. Without the 3DS thriving uh, during the Nintendo Switch's lifespan, uh, we would not have gotten Sushi Striker on 3DS and Switch, which at least gave me an excuse to talk about Sushi Striker again in this video. So, you know. Eh. Perfect. I have Perfect. that. <laughs>